I sit up, I'll look taller. Uh, three, two, one. Uh, welcome to a special edition of the show with no name. We're here in uh, beautiful Riverside Park in the greatest city in the world, New York, New York. And I'm with uh, noted presidential historian David Petrusha, who also knows all things New York, both city and state, correct? So it, so they say, so they say. All right, the news, uh, a lot of news. I wouldn't know. <laughs> A lot of news this week uh, uh, in uh, New York politics. Uh, most important, I think, is this uh, Senate race uh, over on the other side of town. What do you know about that? Well, that's down in Brooklyn. That's in uh, Coney Island, Brighton Bay, uh, Sheepshead Bay area. A little contiguous to Bob Turner's sec uh, house seat. And he, how, how exactly? That's yeah. the old uh, Anthony Weiner, uh, Chuck Schumer district. Uh, and this, and this is the Senate seat of Carl Kruger who was uh, quite the individual in the New York State Senate and had to uh, resign after his conviction on all sorts of nefarious things. He had like played what? the... Oh, I think he was taking bribes and all that. I don't know why people bribe these guys, but uh, actually, they technically, do. he resigned just before uh, his conviction. Right. So um, he's, he's out of there. And uh, the Republican, 34-year-old attorney, a uh, Russian Jewish attorney uh, came to the uh, United States as a as a young toddler from the old Soviet Union. Um, fellow named Storobin um, is the um, is the head. 120 votes, Republican over Democrat city councilman named Lou Fiddler. Much to the shock of uh, Democrats in the entire city of uh, New York. I, I would think so. That has got to be a heavily Democratic district. Two to it? one, at least two to one Democratic, uh, which means as, as things go in New York, it's it's relatively Republican. But two to one don't get you anywhere when you got to win 51 percent. And no Republican probably has ever captured that uh, Senate seat since uh, probably the consolidation of the city in 1896. That's it's pretty incredible, and coming as it uh, did on the uh, heels of the uh, Turner surprise victory for Congress uh, in another special election, which was what last year, I guess. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, is the district changing, or are people just changing their minds? The district has been Russian Jewish for a while. This seems to be is it is it national politics driving this? Uh, or with uh, Obama, with Israel, uh, it's difficult to say. Uh, what about the gay marriage thing? Uh, that seemed to be an issue in uh, the previous election where the Democrat who failed was an assemblyman, he had voted for it. Bob Turner didn't push the issue, but uh, didn't have to. Didn't have to. Uh, the Orthodox community, the rabbinate uh, was pushing it. Uh, so these things can have a cumulative effect. Whether the 120 votes will stand up or not... Uh, Almost doesn't matter. It, it, I mean, it's, it, a, it's, damage, it's a shock no matter what. The damage has been done to the uh, psyche of the, of the Senate Democrats. They're going to have to spend money they don't have to go into, not into the Board of Elections and even into court to monitor this, to fight this. Uh, and it also sends a message to uh, people would be supportive of the Senate minority, that is the Democrats, uh, coming back that uh, this this is this is a gang that can't shoot straight. Wow. Well, the Democrats did hold the Senate uh, 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 for minutes at a time uh, during the last. Uh, well, we, we saw how how popular that was, and that was the era of the three or four amigos of people switching back and forth and deals being cut. Uh, coups and counter coups, which I think is an unfair uh, characterization. I mean, it's just people voting to organize one way or another. It's not a coup. It's well, just people it, voting. But they but they vote in a rather precipitous and often uh, mercenary, and mercenary sort ways. of way. Yeah. And one of the fellows who was very mercenary always in that, not in that particular scenario, was Carl Kruger, who was the, the fellow who held that seat before. And he had he had at times voted to organize with the Republicans when they were in the majority, and then went back to the Democrats. Uh, but finally, his uh, his luck ran out. And 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 when the Democrats were in charge, uh, there was that there was that period when both sides were claiming the majority. Right. Uh, and there was no lieutenant governor. 
Right, and people were the Democrats were like locking the Republicans out, and it was it was it was quite the mess. Now, where where did Kruger end up in uh, in that? Uh, he he mess? he he stood with the Democrats. That that's was, what I thought. He, yeah, you know, he even did, though he had previously when he it, did, when it didn't matter, he organized with the Republicans. He, he looked like it was going to be the Gang of Four, the Four Amigos. He yeah. was not. There was uh, uh, that 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 group has not fared well. Yeah. Uh, the the fellow Montserrat, who had just gotten into the Senate from Queens. Uh, was thrown out after the, the incident with his girlfriend. The, where, yeah, the felony assault. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Pedro Espada is is out. I believe he lost the primary, and he's under investigation for all sorts of things about what goes on with his uh, Medicaid-funded facilities, medical facilities, health centers in the Bronx. The only guy who survived is, in a way, maybe the most controversial is uh, uh, Senator Diaz, uh, also from the Bronx, he's the and he's, contra- he's he's controversial because he's the one Democrat who has held out against gay marriage. Right. And not strongly. only not only in the city, but also in the entire state. So he's like uh, the one amigo. He's the one amigo. He's 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 out there on his own, and uh, uh, if the Republicans now whether they're able to hold this seat, this seat is going to be reconstituted in. In uh, November, uh, it may be inconsequential. You've got the back and forth with the uh, the four counter amigos of the four Republican senators who switched their vote for gay marriage. Whether they are primary or not, that's a real wild card. And well, also, at least two of them already are, right? Uh, well, we'll see who's circulating petitions as oh, well, we as true. we speak. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, not as we speak because uh, yeah. that's that's a later process. But there's 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 a lot of back and forth on that. We we saw a challenge to Roy McDonald, which was which fell apart when Assemblyman McLaughlin, who looked very strong and eager to run, he even appeared before some of the committees in the district right. at the last not at the last minute, but then sort of precipitously backed out, citing family concerns. And, and, and that district is like uh, Washington uh, or the county and Washington, and Saratoga, 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 yeah, uh, look, yeah. northern Columbia, you know, or so all, or uh, if you have all of Columbia. He has some of Columbia. Some I don't know if it's the whole thing or not, but these are these are areas which fairly solidly Republican district. Yeah. Now, so you've got that swinging. Yeah, but, but now the uh, now the the county clerk of Saratoga County, Kathy Marchione, is uh, is uh, asking for support for that position. Uh, yeah. Uh, tentatively, it, it not a formal bid at this point. Well, their Facebook page sure looks like it's yeah. She uh, said she was soliciting support, but yeah. I, but she seems to be still hedging on that and we saw it with McLaughlin not to count the chickens before they're hatched right, right. also uh, but two other districts in play for the Republicans where they may augment their majority uh, one of which is the new Senate seat which impacts right. uh, impacts it is Montgomery County it starts it off and then it goes all the way down to Kingston whether Assemblyman Amador can make the jumper on that I don't know there's a couple of Democratic uh, potential opponents already in uh, a woman of Hispanic origin in the city of Schenectady and a Duanesburg uh, school board member. So there's two people uh, in that. Uh, the Democratic organization in Schenectady seems to be leaning towards the Duanesburg school board member. Uh, maybe he'll go to a primary. Who knows? Uh, it's a free country, as they say. Yeah. And also, I mean, that, that uh, district seems to be drawn for Amador. Wouldn't it, you say? It's drawn, but it's not heavily Republican. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's it's not like a slam dunk. And it and geographically, it's so diverse. And and he has represented only parts of it. And the parts in Kingston would have have never heard of him. And the parts in Kingston can be. Uh, they have an assemblyman who is a Democrat there. They have a county executive who I believe is a Democrat in Ulster County. And the current Senate, uh, Senator Larkin in Kingston was commenting that he only carried the city by 300 votes. And he's one of these institutions down there. So that could be a tough area. They, he does have Green County, which would, be, which would be helpful in a general election. But the other seat the Republicans are looking to pick up is down in Westchester. And Susie Oppenheimer, who barely won against a fellow I think named Cohen in 2010, dropped out, Cohen is running again. So I think they're looking at taking those two seats, holding whatever they have, and uh, uh, probably not retaining any gain they might get.
in southeastern Brooklyn. Now, our, uh, our uh, former candidate for governor, Carl Palladino, uh, is certainly uh, mincing no words out in the western part of the state, uh, and uh, he's backing somebody who's challenging one of the state senate seats out there, correct? Yes, he says he's not backing the former Democrat. Who he is backing, I'm not sure. Uh, but Carl Palladino just backed a, a Democrat who turned into a Republican and won a special assembly seat race in, in Erie County. And again, one of these districts, which was like two to one or more Democratic, this was, this was quite oh, the coup. Hokey and smokes. Hokey smokes. And remember, there were four, there were four special assembly elections this week and... Republicans had held two of the seats previously. They lost both of them. So the only one they won was the one they shouldn't have won. Okay? Wow. Which was, and, and that was the fine hand of Carl Palladino again, the man who carried 90%. 90% of Erie County and I think Niagara, and 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 Niagara County yeah. in his primary against Rick Lazio. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. incredible. Yeah, it was incredible uh, numbers. He's incredibly popular out there. Uh, and I think if you get into a primary situation out there, if he says something, it will have influence. Wow. Uh, now, uh, if Amador runs for the Senate. Yes. That, uh, well, for me, that leaves his assembly seat open. But even before we get into that, also in the last week or two, we've had the redistricting has finally been approved, correct? Yes, and uh, on both levels, one of which levels is, of course, the congressional. Yeah. And the congressional redistricting is the one where the petition period is starting already. It's, it's very interesting to see the, the maps, which were drawn by the special masters, the judges, where the districts actually Makes sense. Look, look like things. <laughs> They're not jagged pieces of string strung across the landscape, but it's, it's, it's shocking. I don't know how to deal with these districts. They're, 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 they're contiguous. Contiguous. They're contiguous. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, because we go back to the Sam Stratton uh, redistricting just bring that up. They're what they're of the, the uh, submarine, submarine district, which ran all the way 62. from the town of Cranesville right. all the way to Auburn. And right. it was it was pretty right. it was pretty narrow, and it was designed to beat him. And yeah, it was it, like ninety percent Republican. And it didn't work at all. Was it no. Jan, was it Janet Hill Gordon that year, or was that the next year? Uh, well, she was. One she of was the one of the one. early fatalities. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and then they gave up. And there was a Bob. And then they went. Then they went the uh, other way and went to Dan Button and uh, ran him out of Congress by by putting him against the Samster, and uh, not a good strategy. Well, unless you're trying to get rid of Dan Button. Right. Who's still around, by the way. He is. Yeah, he's still around. I was at an event. That's incredible. I was at an event a year or so ago at Albany State where either, I think David Hackett Fisher, the historian, was there or, uh, or some other historian, and Dan Button was sitting there in the front row. And it's like, wait a minute, that guy looks vaguely... And I mean, he like, was like uh, editor in chief of the Times Union in 1960 yeah, for years. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then ran for Congress and was elected uh, right around 70, yeah. maybe or 68, 70. I think like a 66 era, you know, yeah. when when Walter Langley or uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Lonsman was uh, right. was was elected at and that time. Former Amsterdamian uh, and best man to, to my father. And yeah. another guy who's still around from that era, that brief era of. Of Republican Camelot, right in, in, in Albany, Albany County, County, is Arnold Proskin. Arnold Proskin, yeah, I, I, I bump into him every once in a while. He's still practicing law, right, the last right. I knew. And uh, he was a district attorney. He was district and, attorney. And then later state senator, right? No, I think or he, I think he tried to go for co uh, county executive and didn't make it. Or, yeah, but I think he something. served as in the assembly for a while. Uh, uh, no, Ray Skuse. Ray Skuse was the only uh, Republican. Assemblyman, he was like a teacher. How about Senate, then? I think he was, he was in one of the other. I'm I think sure. it was only Walt Langley. Really? Yeah. yeah. I think you're confusing him with Mike Hoblock. No, no, no. Mike Hoblock was a different generation. It certainly entirely. was. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what did he? Yeah, he, he gets elected uh, county executive, right? Right. Then he ran for state senate and, and, the, and lost to Breslin. Right. And then he went, tried to go back a couple years ago, and or another, last and, year. And another Breslin. He tried to uh, go, well, he tried to go back to the town of Colony, 
uh-huh. and unseat, well actually two elections ago, and unseat this Paula Mahan, who was the first Democrat elected in Colony and you know, one of those hundred year things. Right. Or probably ever. probably a hundred probably hundred and fifty years, probably yeah. the Whigs before that. Right. Uh, and it's a very uh, very strong Whig town. It was it before, was before yeah. World War II. And um, they uh, he didn't make it. He didn't make it. So Comedy Comedy is that's another interesting thing where they've where they've taken Bob Riley's assembly seat, moved they tried to make that safer by carving out the uh, Saratoga County portions, the Republican portions. Because he just had a uh, a near death experience in 2010, and now they are running. Um, uh, they're running. The Republicans are running the same candidate, they had a woman named Whalen, but it's a tougher district. It's a tougher district now. It has the town of Niskayuna, which has been trending has Tren- has been Democratic, trending heavily Democratic for for, for a sometime. very long period of time. But they they may run the town but supervisor. They do. Yeah, they do what their tickets are. They, Harley always does well. He does well, uh, but he does well in the city of Schenectady as well. Yeah. So I'm not sure how valid that is. They're, the town well, I'm super, just saying it's yeah. not... It's not uh, no, it's not complete song. lockstep. Right. Uh, right. But the... And and they do have... Uh, they have had some representation at the county level as well, but less and less. So that, that could be an interesting assembly seat to watch. As for the new assembly seat or the old the old amador seat i have no idea what's going to happen with that and or even or even who's coming out to run for it as there are like four the four unnamed amigos uh republican uh whispered about in schenectady county but i now live in schenectady county i don't know who they are or even you know how you know serious tom is. How, i know who tom demeza is I've, I've heard of this quackenbush fellow I don't know who the Schenectady contenders might be, or even if one might emerge out of the two towns in um, Albany County. One never knows. So it's all, uh, it all is to be determined. And, and as for the Democrat side, have you heard anything? No, not really. No. Uh, oh, uh, I, I have heard that uh, uh, the previous uh, contender, Santa Barbara, is not favored by the Democrats. But I don't know if that's true or not, whether they don't want him to run or not. I mean, he didn't lose by that much two years ago. He didn't do that badly, no. no. Uh, but, well, it depends, I guess, if they've got anybody else. That's uh, Right, it's like you uh, had your turn, and right. where it's now now somebody right. else gets a gets right. a whack at it. Uh, the Mesa's candidacy would be interesting because he would not be able to vote for himself in the primary. Right. As, as he's in the process of changing well, parties. Well, we do that a lot. Uh, we, we do that a lot in yeah. New York State. I yeah. mean, the Doug Hoffman effect. He ran twice for Congress, couldn't vote for himself. Uh, a certain other congressional candidate uh, a few years ago could not vote for himself. Uh, so New York kind of, you know, who knows if uh, Hillary Clinton was still voting in Arkansas when she ran. Right, right. Uh, well, speaking of Hillary Clinton, uh, her uh, Senate seat is up this year. Yep, yep. Uh, now held by Kirsten Gillibrand. Are we back to Bob Turner again? Is this where we came in? Uh, are we back to Bob Turner? I think we are. Well, that's true. That's right. That's right. I forgot Turner is involved in this. That's uh, right. Uh, so last weekend, uh, both the Republican and the Conservative uh, Party conventions were held. They diverged. Uh, well, sort of. Yeah. I mean, sort of. They, they sort of diverged. They might uh, unmerge. I mean, uh, merge. Wendy Long, uh, who's from down here someplace. Uh, yes. Uh, is, Lives uh, in Manhattan, uh, I think. Uh, Goes to church was in Manhattan. The, uh, almost unanimous choice of the Conservative Party. Yes, and got uh, 47, 48 percent of the Republicans. Of, of the Republican uh, vote, uh, which was pretty astonishing, actually. They for, say for, that they say she knocked them dead at the. Uh, well, she got a standing ovation, uh, and all reports of county committees in this area, which which Montgomery County supported her. Saratoga County, I believe, supported her. Schenectady County supported her. So she's done very well at appearing at these things. She seems to be a very dynamic speaker. She knows Washington. You know, it's not like somebody's showing up and and you're going to have to tell her how it works. Of the three candidates, she really knows the most about Washington. Bob Turner's there now, but he's been there for like 
six, eight Ten months. months tops, you know? You're right. Uh, he's he's probably, also getting kind of old, isn't he? Well, he's going to be 71 at the election. Yeah. So, uh, Wendy Turner had served... That's like at, 10 years older than me. It's, it's yeah. very disturbing. Yeah. It's very disturbing. Wendy Long, no relation to Mike Long, the conservative county or state chairman, right. is, uh, or has been, press secretary to Senator Gordon Humphrey of New Hampshire and to Senator Bill Armstrong of Colorado. Right. She's also been a spokesman and chief counsel for a, a group monitoring judicial appointments. She clerked for Clarence Thomas at the Supreme Court yeah. uh, and alongside, I believe, Laura Ingram. Right. And so she knows... One of my Facebook friends. Yeah, right? she knows Washington. She knows how uh, the game is, is played down there. So all of a sudden, this seat that everybody just kind of took for granted as an, as an easy Democrat win could be in play. It could be in play because... She's got national the, attention. Well, she does. Gillibrand has, is, has uh, national attention is good. Seven to eight million dollars is good too, which is what Gillibrand has. Yeah. Um, and she's raising more. She was raising uh, from the 1% this week, she was at a a, cock, uh, a fundraiser cocktail party, I guess, at Anna Wintour's uh, residence. Uh, she's the editor of Vogue. Kenneth Cole was there. You know, all the beautiful people. Right. All the beautiful people. Right. And so, you know, but her approval ratings hover around 51, 52 percent. And they're, tops. they're based on more they're, name recognition than anything else. There's, uh, there's. I don't think. I don't think most people in New York realize that she has the most far left voting record of anyone in the in the Senate of the United States. Very left. I recall one vote where she was like one of three people it, voting it, yeah. for something. It was yeah, way it, out there. Way out there. And she does not. She does not do anything to let people know what she's up to. Maybe that's why. Yeah. And she that, doesn't that, she doesn't get yeah. around. Yeah. She doesn't I don't know I don't know if she has visited Montgomery County or Schenectady County. Yeah, I think County. she came in during the flood. I didn't see her. I, I don't know if she visits New York, to tell you the truth, except when she's raising money in Manhattan. Yeah. Um so Well that's not that's not good. You gotta you gotta touch bases. You you do, and that is one thing which Schumer does. So he's, this would be he, like your I mean, she's just running one election after another here. Right. right. She's just run twice. She's been very, she's been very lucky in terms of who her opponents have been. Right. The Sweeney thing was a uh, bolt from the blue. Right. John which, Sweeney which was the congressman over. that she beat. Right. Uh, and and his, his life because he was. Well, he was beating up somebody too, wasn't he, or something? Well, right? I don't know what it was. It was uh, it was so like messy. Yeah. It was it was it was probably all of the above. Right. And it all became public a week or so before the election, and he just exploded. Right. And then Sandy Treadwell was Sandy Treadwell, and was not going to excite anyone. Although he spent, he had a unlimited resources basically to run, but he had no great message or or resume or compelling reason to throw her out. And then the last no, thing... Oh, what was he? Was he state chairman? At yeah, he was state chairman Republican of the Republican chairman? Party, and he had been secretary of state under oh, uh, right. George Pataki, right. and that was that was really about it. Um, so, and then the last time out, very underfunded, and uh, Joe Diogardi, I think, emerged. It's very difficult to remember. You had two Senate seats going. Right, right, And right. He, he ran against her, I think. David Townsend ran against Schumer. Dio Gardi beat David Malpass and a fellow named Blakeman from uh, Nassau County in the primary. Right. But Dio Gardi, once the excitement passed, that he was the father of the woman on American Idol, right. uh, which passed yeah. in about 48 hours, it was kind of downhill from there for yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. That was kind of like Scott Brown's going to think, too, wasn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it only works for, for so long, you know? Uh. Now, Brown in Massachusetts, who uh, our neighboring state, so we can... Oh, we know all about it. We, uh, all of a sudden, he looks very strong. He uh, does look... It, there's some very... Uh, uh, Larry Sabato has a statement out that some primary in Wisconsin can determine Republican or Democratic control of the United States Senate. And I'm looking at... I'm looking at the numbers for okay. Maine is is probably gone for the Republicans. Who knows? But because I mean, of, that, because that's of this, all confusion because of too. this Angus King thing. But if some Democrat wants to emerge and say, "I'm not playing this game. Right. I'm not going in the bag. I'm going to run and split the vote," then you might see something different in Maine. 
Massachusetts seems very strong for Brown. The other race which seemed to be troublesome for the Republicans, which they were worried about, there were only like three, and they don't have a lot of them up. Right. There are very few Republicans right, so running this year. 13, it's all it. Democrats. Yeah. And you see polls in the last week where uh, Senator Heller, who was appointed in Nevada, even though Obama is supposed to be carrying Nevada, Heller is up by about seven right. votes. Right. And you also see where Claire McCaskill, uh, the Democrat, is down and in trouble. Right. And you also see where in Florida the incumbent is down. And where, where Senator, former Senator Kerry of Nebraska comes back from Greenwich Village and he's going to like pretend he's a corn husker again yeah. uh, in Nebraska. And, and his that initial can, that poll can, numbers. That can, uh, that can wear out your welcome. It certainly can. Uh, and uh, is it? And it's also kind of a sign of desperation of the Democrats. In well, Nebraska. it is that they there's, gotta, where, where they the talent. This guy who hasn't where, lived there for years. Where did the talent go? Yeah. So not good. Uh, so all those seats, which which they would have to retain or take again, uh, the, the numbers have not been good. The only bright thing for the Democrats has been Maine, and I, I think even I think even that you, is can be confused. Well, Demo it's like Maine is so Democrat. It's so Democrat as a Republican governor. It currently has two Republican senators, and it has their, their House of Representatives and State Senate in Republican hands. That's how Democratic it is. Yeah. So maybe we're ignoring some of the data here, you know? But they do have two Democratic congressmen, but those two Democratic congressmen, neither one is running for this seat. Now, is right. that and, and for a moment, it looked like both of them were. It looked like both of them were, and everybody, everything was going to go up the line, like some trickle-up thing, where everybody, every town councilman or right, selectman right, 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 is right. going to be running for some other office on the Democratic that's side. Like, that's like, yeah. And on the Republican side. You because know, that sounds like something my wife used to say. Every time a Supreme Court justice died or retired, yes. she'd call me up and say, you just moved up a notch. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So, uh, so who's this Angus McGee or whatever his name is? Angus there? Angus King, Angus King is a former independent governor of Maine. He is quite popular. He won two terms, but then he was out, and he's been out for a while. He was trying to raise. Oh, I don't even remember him. No, was he in? well, he was in like in the late eighties and nineties, I think. Maybe the nineties and the oughts. But in his second term, he did something which ticked off the people in the lumber industry. And that cut into his popularity well, in the northern Senate uh, House District. So he's got some problems in the northern part of the state, uh, which may be a carryover from that. So is he running as an independent? Or he would be Democrat? running as an independent again, yeah. I think he need one or 2,000 signatures or something. And, and but. But Olympia Snow uh, bombed out fairly near to the petition period there, which which caused right. you know, causes problems. Well, who's running on the Republican side? That's another question. I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like there's a real high profile. All right. The so last you, you I know heard, all things New York, but Maine, you're a little Maine. Special. I'm uh, not doing too bad. I knew about yeah. that lumber thing. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Well, you know, it's a lovely day. We probably should uh, do something else besides sit around and talk. That's right. So, uh, uh, my thanks to uh, special guest, noted presidential historian David Petrusha, and, uh, and the New York, York, and the New York, of all things New York. And to the New York City Parks Commission. What? <laughs> which provided our studio for today. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, uh, we'll be back uh, someday with more of the show with no name. <laughs>